Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Michael Maney begins now. Good evening everyone, it's the night Tasmanian football fans have been waiting decades for. The launch of the historic Tasmania Football Club. The team's name, colours and jersey will be revealed over the course of the next hour, paving the way for the club's entry into the AFL competition in 2028. We have full coverage of this major milestone with our reporters at launch sites across the state. Nick Kelly is at the Devonport launch. Victoria Easto is at the official launch at Utah Stadium and John Hunt is among the action at a live stream party at the Hobart Football Club. First to Nick Kelly at Devonport's Paranapple Centre and Nick, the Tasmania Football Club is going to be revealed tonight one piece at a time. Yeah, sure is, Michael. Starting with the colours now. Sorry, I have to be very quiet because proceedings have just got underway here at the Paranapple Centre in Devonport. But you're right, we will be beginning uh, with the colours being revealed in just a few minutes' time by some Tassie AFL legends. We'll then move on to a reveal uh, much anticipated elements such as the name and the mascot and the jumper and finally the membership uh, which people will be able to snap up from tonight onwards. Now among the who's who here tonight are AFL boss Andrew Dillon and chair of the Tasmanian Football Club, Grant. O'Brien um, and of course the room is also filled with hundreds of people from the local community who snapped up tickets very very quickly but for those who can't make it Michael we will of course bring the action to you as it happens from here in Devonport. Good on you Nick back to you uh, a little while now to Victoria Easto who is at Launceston's Utah Stadium and uh, Victoria the club's ambassador Tigers great Jack Revolt is among the guests there tonight. He is Michael and fittingly so as one of the state's greatest footy exports. He is joined here in Launceston tonight by a packed crowd who are all on hand and very excited to mark this historic night. Of course, Tasmanians have been fighting for this team for decades, but it was the Believe Tasmanian campaign featuring Jack Rerolt which really helped this final push. Almost 100,000 believers have since signed on to show their support for the Tassie team. While there's not many people who are here tonight, we'll be betting will be called the Turbo Chooks. Everyone agrees that this will be a night to remember. Michael. No doubt about that, Victoria. Thanks for that. And for those who didn't manage to snap up a ticket to an official launch site, live stream parties have been set up at 18 venues around the state. John Hunt joins uh, us from one of those parties in Hobart. And John, what's the mood like among the footy fans there? Well, as you can hear there, Michael, there's plenty of excitement in the air at the Hobart Football Club. After a three-decade wait, the footy dream of thousands of Tasmanians is about to come alive. The Tigers Den here at the historic TCA ground opening for the special occasion. Other pubs, clubs and venues across Tasmania are also joining in. These parties have come about due to the overwhelming demand for tickets to the official launch events. Fans have begun settling in here for the big reveal, with many keen to know what the club will be called and their colours. So Michael, a big night ahead is here, both here at the Hobart Club and across the state. I'll be back a little later with the first review from supporters of what they, they think of the club's identity. Certainly is a big night, thanks for that. We'll return to Nick Kelly for the first big reveal in just a few minutes time, but now let's take a look at the day's other news. To the state election now, Michael Ferguson has faced further questions about what he knew about a police funeral granted to an officer accused of child sexual abuse. It comes after revelations the former police minister's office received notice of allegations beforehand, prompting claims of inaction. Five days until polling, and it's a police funeral from five years ago, given to Paul Reynolds, who is being investigated for pedophilia allegations that's dominating discussion. It is important that Michael Ferguson stands up today and explains what he knew and when he knew about it and gives a full explanation about what he didn't do and what he did do. Michael Ferguson refused a request for an on-camera interview today but gave an interview late this afternoon on Tasmanian Radio. He says his office received a briefing note about Reynolds on September 18, a day before the funeral. He can't say exactly when he read it, but it's signed three weeks later. Some are casting doubt on that timeline. I believe it's inconceivable uh, that as police minister, he didn't read that brief. 
I also think it's inconceivable uh, that he wouldn't in any other circumstance have prepared and given a condolence motion. I think victim survivors and whistleblowers in fact will be, have been quite distressed to see that there is further evidence that the government should have acted on Paul Reynolds' funeral. The Liberals say the Greens have got the timing wrong. And they're politicising very sensitive issues, reopening wounds for victim survivors to try and score cheap political points during an election. The Premier focused on his 2030 strong plan. I'm very proud that this comprehensive plan focuses on uh, what Tasmanians care about. Labor wants to offer up land zoned for housing to kickstart public-private partnerships. We can't keep going with the same old, same old from the Liberal Party. We need new and innovative ways to bring houses out of the ground as quickly as possible. The Greens have unveiled their own big spending promises this campaign, planning to fund them by taxing corporations. While they're not, Tasmanian services, critical services in health, housing and education are not being properly funded. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. A man has drowned after getting caught in rough seas off the state's northwest coast. Emergency services were called to Kui Beach yesterday afternoon after receiving reports the man and two children were struggling in strong currents. The trio was pulled from the water, but despite best efforts to revive the man, he couldn't be saved. The two children were taken to the Northwest Regional Hospital for observation. A report is being prepared for the coroner. Returning now to Nick Kelly in Devonport and Nick, the first element of the Tasmania Football Club is about to be unveiled. Yes, Michael, it has just a few minutes ago. In fact, the, we've now learnt the team colours. We expected them to stick with their traditional colours and that is exactly what they have done. Uh, myrtle green, primrose yellow and rose red will be the colours of the Tasmanian Football Club. Uh, they say they're colours that go back to uh, 1908 when they were locked in um, and they will remain the club's colours going forward. They've also just renamed uh, something that is probably no great surprise that the club will also be called the Tasmanian Devils. Michael will keep uh, come and bring you updates as they happen here at the in Devonport. Dozens of supported accommodation beds for women experiencing homelessness in the state south are lying empty with funds needed to reopen the doors to a Hobart shelter. Bethlehem House has been vacant since its operations moved to another site last year. Philanthropist group the Select Foundation is willing to put up initial funding to refurbish the decades-old site, but more is needed. We can't start that funding until uh, the cost of running the, the project is locked in going forward. Partnering with Hobart City Mission, the St Vincent de Paul Society is calling for government investment to run the initiative for the next three years. This site cannot go ahead as accommodation for women in need unless it receives recurrent funding from the government. Eventually, Vinnie's plans on turning the site into more permanent housing. Returning now to Nick Kelly, where another element of the Tasmania Football Club has unveiled, been unveiled. Nick, the team logo and jersey just been announced. Yeah, sure has, Michael. In fact, there were roars of excitement here in the audience and people started chanting devils as that feisty little mascot was unveiled. Uh, as we announced earlier, the name is the Tasmania Devils. No great surprise there, but it's uh, quite a cute, lovable character that they have unveiled as the, as the team mascot. They've said that they wanted something that was uh, feisty and represented the Tasmanian passion, and they certainly seem to have got it. As for the jersey, well, no great surprises there either. They have um, stuck with a, a Guernsey that largely resembles the current Devils state team, uh, but uh, take a listen to that announcement a few moments ago. Five, four, three, two, one. The name of your football club, Tasmania Devils. Three, two, one. Your Devil.
to add to the excitement, everyone who was at each of these six live sites um, has just been handed a T-shirt, their very first piece of club memorabilia. I'm sure that'll be worth a fortune very soon, Michael. But uh, the people at home aren't missing out. We'll have details very soon of how you can stamp up your very first club membership. Certainly a big night there, right around the state. Just very exciting for everyone. A popular northern Tasmanian tourism experience has been thrown another lifeline. Bogues Brewery Tours will continue until at least February next year. Parent company Lion Nathan canned the attraction last year, but the state government stepped in with a $1 million cash injection. Over the past 12 months, visitor numbers are up 20%. We're getting more people through, which is a really, really good. And we're proud of our brewery and we love showing it off um, to people as they visit Launceston. Anyone with a current Tasmanian driver's licence is eligible for a free tour. A 100-year-old walking track on top of Mount Wellington has been restored. And just in time, with hundreds of visitors set to make the trek before a major race this weekend. A popular walking track restored just in time for the Kanani Mountain Run. We're going to see almost 600 runners traverse the zigzag track this weekend as part of the Kanani Mountain Run and wow, they're in for a treat. A much needed overhaul that took three years at a cost of $3 million. We had about 500 tonnes of rocks uh, that were brought up here over the period and we had to stagger the work uh, over three summers. It's hoped the works will provide a further boost to Hobart's tourism industry and the City Council, with the benefits to trickle down across other sectors. Uh, and visitor infrastructure is so important on the mountain, we need to invest more money, uh, but it's important that um, that investment is shared, not just the local council. The upgrades on this track are part of seven years worth of work by Hobart City Council, with improvements also being made to the Pinnacle and Organ Pipe tracks. Locals and visitors trying out the track today before the professionals tag to it on Friday. I've run all across the world and all across Australia and I can say 100% this mountain is an amazing asset right on the doorstep of Hobart. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmania News. The Domain Tennis Centre is in line for a major facelift if Labor wins government this weekend. It's committing $4.5 million towards Tennis Tasmania's plan to upgrade the ageing facilities, which includes a purpose-built indoor show court. We get quality content here and it's important that this venue keeps up with modern standards. This is such an important investment at Domain to future-proof the Hobart International. Um, our one event that we're extremely proud of being the only women's lead-in event to the Australian Open and we want to retain that. It's hoped the upgrades will also attract and support community participation in the sport. Tasmania's coach and captain say they're ready to make the tough selection calls for Thursday's Sheffield Shield final against Western Australia. Players feeling refreshed and relaxed after a few days off, with the coach confident the Wacker holds no fears. Fresh from a weekend off, the Tassie Tigers are getting a kick out of being in a Sheffield Shield final. Next week is, is part of the journey, um, win, win, lose or draw. It's something that's... Um, that would mean a lot to a, a lot of our players who have, who have been on the journey for, for some of us for, for quite a while. Missing out on hosting rights following a shock loss to South Australia last week, the coach wants to avoid a repeat of their first innings performance. We don't think we, we bowled or batted very well in the first innings. We were really disappointed with our, our first innings uh, performances. The Tigers aren't daunted by the Wackers' reputation. Drawing at the venue in October, they're confident the pitch suits their game style. With bonus points critical in the event of a draw, they're prepared to go on the attack. We'll be certainly attacking the the, the first part of the game. It's a place that we've, we've played some really good cricket at. That should give the group a hell of a lot of confidence. But before that, they need to pick an 11. With Riley Meredith and Mitch Owen both fit, the versatile Tigers will have big calls to make. Those discussions, however, are nothing new. To be honest, the conversations have been really hard from round one. <laughs> we had some really tough, really tough calls, I felt like, early in the season. Very lucky in that regards with the depth that we've, we've got, both with the pace bowling, our all-rounder depth and, and batters. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmania's AFL team may not have players yet, but it now has an identity. 
Over the past hour, key details of what the 19th licence will look like have been announced at launch events and live viewing sites across the state. The biggest reveal, the team's name. We are Tasmania Devils, or Perinina in the language of the Palawa. Called the Wild for now, we'll get the chance to nickname it in the coming months. Our Devil is different than the other 18 club emblems. And we're proud of that. We are proud of our difference and cannot wait to compete on the national stage. The famous map is being taken to the national stage. Team organisers saying the club will play in other jumpers, but the island will be at its heart. Now, colours won't be straying from the traditional myrtle green, primrose yellow and rose red agreed on way back in 1908. Returning to Nick Kelly in Devonport now, and Nick, we now know what the Devils will look like. How can Tasmanians get behind the new team? Oh, yes, absolutely. There's such an air of excitement here at the moment, Michael, and I can see everyone is actually on their phone as they look around the room. There's lots of people on their phones hurriedly signing up uh, to the membership portal, which has only just opened a couple of minutes ago. Head to TasmaniaFC.com. Uh, on that website there, you can snap up your very first foundation membership. I did mine just a few uh, seconds before going on air. Uh, for that $10, you get your choice of a sticker. Uh, you'll also be uh, get, get the moniker of founding member for life. So, Michael, plenty of excitement in this room and plenty of excitement to come. I'm sure you'll be hearing plenty of Go Devils for years to come. No doubt about that, Nick. Uh, big night there in Devonport and all around the state. So how has, the, how has the club's launch been received by Tasmanian fans? John Hunt joins us again from a live stream party in Hobart. And John, have fans there given the Tassie team the thumbs up? Oh, Michael, they're loving it. Those early announcements have gone down quite well here at the Hobart Footy Club. Around 30 people gathered and they had their eyes glued to the screen watching the live stream on the AFL website, along with hundreds more statewide. Some not as supportive with protesters gathering at the Rosney Park live site protesting over the stadium and the location of the High Performance Centre. Back here, there's been plenty of cheering and clapping as one by one the team's identity was revealed. The biggest cheer reserved for the news, the iconic map will be the club's jumper, with many here having fond memories of it. And while it's a small sample size, early indications suggest the decisions made will be welcomed. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah, it's been, been too long coming, so uh, yeah, it's going to be great when we finally get our team in 28. It'll bring um, young people back into the game, and that's what we need in football circles. We need young players. So, Michael, I'm sure in the next hour or so, many of these fans behind me will be rushing to their computers to get that membership sorted. Battling through rain and slippery mud, Launceston mountain biker Cameron Ivory is the XCO national champion after stamping his authority on the field at his former home course in Lake Macquarie, creating a sizeable lead on the final lap to claim the race a full minute ahead of his nearest rival. Northwest Coast uh, motocross rider Jed Beaton has been pipped for glory in the Pro MX opening round in Victoria. Despite leading for most of the race, Victorian Kyle Webster managed to edge in front of Beaton on the final lap to steal a 1.9 second win. He's still two years away from even getting his learner's licence, but that didn't stop 14-year-old Kingston boy Oliver Wickham from slapping a set of P-plates on his Hyundai XL to claim five podiums from five races at Simmons Plains, including two firsts and setting a lap record. The St Aloysius students getting the better of a three-way tussle in the final race, now sitting second in the overall standings. The weekend was great. I had a lot of fun learning. It was a great environment to be in. It was a far slower day at the track for pole position holder Tony D'Alberto, refusing to enter the final TCR race in protest of decisions made the day before. The Victorian missing an eventful race three, taken out by Britain's Tom Oliphant.
Good evening, Campania and Hobart with our top today of 30 degrees. Launceston 27, Devonport 25 and Burnley 23. Some centres reporting temperatures up to 10 degrees above average. Bushy Park, Grove and Ouse 29, Strawn and King Island 27, Flinders Island and Friendly Beaches 25 today, Smithen and St Helens 24 and Low Head a top of 23 degrees. Patchy low cloud found its way over parts of the north today. Some scattered cloud this afternoon reached southern regions. Severe tropical cyclone Megan has whipped up plenty of cloud over the the tropics. More is there over eastern New South Wales and southern Queensland and also way back over the south of WA. Tomorrow the cyclone progresses inland and quickly becomes an ex-tropical cyclone. We have a cold front that will approach Tasmania and cross the state during the day. The winds nor nor easterly are 20 to 30 knots, tending northwesterly later in the day and reaching 35 knots over eastern waters. And with that pickup in wind speed in mind, a gale warning has been issued for waters between Wineglass Bay and Tasman Island. A strong wind warning from Flinders Island to Wineglass Bay and from Tasman Island to Stanley. Hobart, another high of 29 tomorrow, well getting close to 30, shower or two becoming windy, showers increasing for Adventure Bay, 24 the top for Taralea. Launceston tomorrow a high of 26 with showers, showers for Devonport, 26 the top also for Bridport. Burnie expecting a high of 21 with showers, showers increasing for Strawn, 26 the maximum and 24 the top for Marawar. St Helens tomorrow 25 with showers, showers increasing over Swansea and Whitemark, 27 for both those centres. On Wednesday showers over the west, south and east, partly cloudy for the central north and northwest. Fine on Thursday apart from a light shower or two over the west and on Friday showers for Strawn and possibly King Island, fine for the remainder with west-southwest winds. A sunny 28 in Perth tomorrow, showers developing over Adelaide to Melbourne, showers continuing for Sydney and Brisbane and conditions approving a little over Darwin. Fine in Hobart is 23, 24 right now in Launceston, Devonport mostly sunny and 22, exciting day and night. Um, I'm not very good on the line normally Michael but it only took me about three minutes to sign up as a foundation member of the Tasmania Football Club. That means I'm a, a member now of two AFL uh, clubs, uh, is, that, is that allowed? No, Murph, I think Sydney's got to go, but uh, my Hawthorne won't go. Well, that's all for your news for now. I'll be back later with updates. Uh, go the Devils. Thanks for joining us. Good night.